Okay, so a few years ago, I bought my first Anglo concertina and I thought incorrectly that like my Melodian, you just had notes on the push and the pull and that was pretty much it. I knew that there were C, G Anglo concertinas and G, D and maybe B flat, F. I didn't realise the minefield I was about to start stepping over. So let me explain further. I started off with a couple of uh, two row, 20 button instruments, real budget end things, pretty horrible to play. I soon got rid of those and bought this Frank Edgeley CG Anglo Concertina. And I thought, okay, I know this row's C major, the middle row here. Uh, this row nearest to me is G major. And the row furthest away from me is the accidental row, so full of the sharps and flats that I don't have on the main two rows. I kind of understood that. I didn't know anything about Jeffrey's layout, Wheatstone layout, and this was where I ran into trouble. When I talk about Wheatstone and Jeffreys in this video, I'm not talking about the brand name of Concertina. I'm talking about the Wheatstone layout and the Jeffreys layout. And you may well have a Wheatstone Concertina that's got a Jeffreys layout and vice versa. Also, be aware that some 30 button Concertinas are not standard Wheatstone or Jeffreys layout. Uh, they may have the odd button tweaked. If they own a Wheatstone instrument, they may have had this button here tweaked so that the note on the push is a D sharp and not the standard C sharp okay so you have to be very careful when you're buying one of these things especially if you're buying it on eBay which I wouldn't recommend make sure that the person that's selling it to you sends you the layout of the instrument make sure you know what you're getting before you get it because if it's wrong if the buttons aren't tuned correctly uh, you may well find you've got to take it to someone to do that and it could work out expensive. As a general rule, budget instruments, not one like this, I'll show you what I mean. Here's a Rochelle, which is a Constantina Connections instrument, probably the best of the budget instruments. These sort of instruments have a wheat stone layout. You'd be hard pushed to find a budget instrument like a Scarlatti or something like that with a Jeffreys layout, but you may find one like that. You may find that the person that's had a, a budget instrument has had it retuned to Jeffreys layout, but I would seriously doubt it. But I want you to be aware of the layouts so that if you buy a better instrument, better quality instrument, uh, you know what to look for and why you'd want a Jeffreys against a Wheatstone layout. And then a bit later on, you might get into the world of Jeffreys concertinas, one like this. This is actually a B flat F, but the same thing as the CG, just down a tone. And this instrument has got 38 buttons. So you've got your 30 buttons plus a few extras and a drone note on this side. Gets quite complicated. And this one is basically a Jeffreys layout but with some oddities, some changes. I won't get into that here. I'm only going to talk about 30 button instruments. But just be aware if you go deeper, you go more expensive and you get into the world of 38 and more buttons, you may find even more oddities. So again, double check before you buy Another make that you see a lot is the Lachanel, and I've got a Lachanel English concertina. I don't have an Anglo, but they tend to be Wheatstone layout, but again, could have been retuned to Jeffreys, so beware. I, I'm saying this a lot because, you know, I fell into this trap quite early on and got instruments that had the wrong layout and then spent quite a lot of money having them changed, so I don't want you to make the same mistake as I made. If you have a 20 button instrument, you don't have to worry about this because there's no such thing as a Wheatstone or Jeffreys layout. Maybe a button 10 or button one on the G row might be slightly different, but other than that, you know, you don't have to worry pretty, pretty much they're all the same. So here's my chart that I've recently done uh, that shows Jeffreys layout and Wheatstone layout for the CG instrument. I haven't done one for the GD yet, but you know, it's all uh, down a perfect fourth from this so perhaps I'll get to that at a later stage at the moment I'm concentrating on the CG which is what most people have sorry if you've got a GD but hopefully I'll get to that in the fullness of time so just to understand this you have at the top two charts Jeffrey's left hand side Jeffrey's right hand side LHS RHS the three rows accidental row you've got the C row and the G row push and on the pull so just so you know, here we have C row and you have on the push C3, G3, C4, E4, G4. So that's these notes here. C3, G3, C4, E4, G4. And you might be wondering what's this numbering all about? Well, C4 
this button here, which is button three, C row push. That is middle C on a piano. So if you're not sure whether you've got a C, G or a G, D instrument, that's a really good check. Play that button on the push, play the middle C on your piano or keyboard, and if it's the same, you've got a C, G instrument. If you've got a G note there, you've got a G, D instrument. That's a really easy way to tell. If you don't have a piano, try downloading one of these guitar tuners to your phone and check the notes that way. These apps tend to be free and they're useful uh, things to have if you're a musician. But this is a C, G and that's what the numbers are. And the higher pitch the notes go, the higher the numbers go. Here we have a, a D6, accidental row, uh, button 10 as I call it on the pull so you can hear D6 is a lot higher than C3 so the higher the number the higher the pitch the way it works is you have C3 to B3 that's one octave and then you have C4 to B4 that's the next octave and then you have C5 to B5 and so on you see there's another system called the Helmholtz system and this chart here is showing you the accidental row of the Jeffries and the Wheatstone and you see you've got the name of the note and these little ticks little almost like inverted commas they're much smaller than this normally i've done this very very big uh, it says up here two ticks equals octave c5 to b5 three ticks equals c6 to b6 so if you see two ticks it's a uh, octave five so this is d sharp five c sharp five this would be c sharp six d6 middle c in this system is a small c with one tick i've done all these as uppercase but they would be lowercase normally so again the more ticks you have the higher pitch the notes are i prefer to use c3 c4 c5 c6 i think it's much easier right bit of a rigmarole that sorry about that so you have jeffrey's layout at the top and wheatstone layout at the bottom there are other layouts i should warn you this instrument when it arrived was a carol layout and this button here was C sharp in both directions and I think that is maybe better for Irish music I don't really play Irish traditional music but it had three C sharps on this side uh, so you know watch out for that so I had it converted so it's this is a Jeffries layout so if you've got a carol layout you'll have a C sharp on the push and the pull on this button here button six accidental row just so you know by the way i number my buttons one to five on the left hand side all three rows six to ten on the right hand side all three rows other people have other ideas on how to number their buttons but this is how i do mine like i say it's a pretty complicated world the world of the anglo concertina and if you're just jumping into it you're probably fairly horrified about this but don't worry especially if you have lessons with me um, i'm going to help you every step of the way and i've got loads of free stuff on my website to help you so let's look at the two accidental rows of the two instruments i'm talking about these cells here the accidental row the main difference between the jeffries and the wheatstone layout is the accidental row right hand side the left hand side is the same for both instruments unless it's been tweaked in any way it's this row here these five buttons here, and you'll only have five even if you've got a 38 button instrument five buttons on the accidental row it's the row furthest away from the row that's at the front of the instrument it's this row here that's different for the two layouts before we get into the differences look here look at these blue cells g sharp five c sharp six on the push buttons eight and nine that's the same for both layouts you see just the same as is this f sharp six down here notice before i come to the accidental row button 10 on the g row on the jeffries is an f6 and on the wheatstone it's a b6 different note completely okay but other than that the g row is the same like i say it's the accidental row that is different now the difference is this d sharp 5 g5 and b flat 5 they're on buttons 7 8 and 9 on the pull with the jeffries but on the wheatstone they're one up they're one higher they're on buttons six seven and eight so if i play these three notes on the jeffries so d sharp five g5 b flat five on the pull so d sharp five button seven g5 button eight b flat five button nine and you might prefer to call d sharp five e flat five 
B flat 5, A sharp 5, but... So those three buttons there, okay, remember that? Let's do the same thing with the Wheatstone layout on my Rochelle. This time I'm going to play buttons 6, 7 and 8. So the same three notes, but up one from where they were on the Jefferies. So that's how to tell. That's your main way of telling whether you've got a Wheatstone or a Jefferies. This is Wheatstone. On the Jefferies layout instrument, you have D sharp 5 on the push on button 6 and D sharp 5 on the pull button 7. You see, so you've got two D sharp 5s there. And you've got C sharp 5 on the pull on button 6 and on the push on button 7. So you've got D sharp 5 and C sharp 5 in both directions on those two buttons, buttons 6 and 7 on the accidental row. Let's see what happens on the Wheatstone now. On this layout, you only have C sharp 5 on the push on button 6 and D sharp 5 on the pull on button 6. On button 7, on the Wheatstone layout, you've got A5 on the push and G5 on the pull. Okay, same as this button here, button 8 on the C row, on the push. Okay, so you have A5 push, G5 pull. Now that's not the same as the Jefferies. Like I said, on the Jefferies, on button number 7, you've got C sharp 5 on the push and D sharp 5 on the pull. The A5 that was on the push on button number 7 is actually on the push on button 10 with the Jeffrey. So the A5 is three buttons higher on the Wheatstone than it is on the Jeffreys. The other difference is on the Jeffreys on button 10, and I call button 10 this furthest one down here, accidental row down, because it's all accidental row. I've got a D6 on the pull here. Okay, D6, remember that? And on that same button on the pull, it's a much higher note on the Wheatstone layout. Every time you see this black instrument, that's the Wheatstone layout. And every time you see the other instrument, the wooden instrument, that is the Jefferies layout. Going back to the Wheatstone layout on this Rochelle instrument, on the G row, on the push, every button gives me a note from the chord of G major. So I have B3, D4, G4, B4, D5, G5, B5, D6, G6, B6. All notes from the chord of G major, either a G or a B or a D. On the Jeffreys layout, it's almost the same. until you get to that note there, uh, on that note, and I mentioned this earlier. On this button here, button 10, G row push, you have an F6, not a B6. That kind of spoils the flow of notes from the chord of G major. That would give you kind of a, um, a G7 chord, if you like, uh, but we won't get into that here. But that is what's different there. But you have F sharp six on both a Wheatstone and Jefferies on the pull on that button. Now the Jefferies instrument is completely chromatic. That means you get all the notes. Imagine you were sitting at the piano playing every note, white and black from the left to the right. You'd have notes run chromatically from A3 to G6, but there is a missing D sharp six. On the Wheatstone, it's chromatic from A3 to G6. You have every single note, uh, but there is no D sharp six missing. The Jefferies range is C3 to G6, so the highest note on the Jefferies is G6. The Wheatstone range is higher, it goes from C3, this lowest note here, up to B6, which is this one here. So the Wheatstone goes higher, has a bigger range than the Jefferies. Although if you'd ever use that really high pitched note, I'd be surprised. So it's pretty complicated, isn't it? I mean, I was I was in a complete mess with this when I first started. I just didn't know where I was. I've got a bit of a better handle on it now. And the main purpose of this video is to help people if they bought a slightly better quality instrument in working out what layout they have. My own taste is for the Jefferies layout. I find that it's far better for me. Particularly, I like this D6 on the accidental row, button 10, pull. 
uh, which is also found on button eight on the Giro and the push. You don't have that note on the Wheatstone layer and I use that note quite a lot and I find it's handy to have it on the accidental row on the pull. Like I say, it's not on the Wheatstone layer and that's the main reason that I prefer the Jeffries. Also, with this setup on button six on the accidental row, you can do lovely little semitone slurs uh, that you can't do on the Wheatstone layer and that's possibly better for Irish music, I think. So there we are. Hopefully that's demystified the whole thing for you. Like I say, it is fairly complicated, but if you watch this video and you have your instrument out as you watch it, uh, you'll be able to find out very quickly whether you have a Wheatstone layout or a Jeffries layout. If you bought a budget 30 button instrument, more than likely you've got a Wheatstone layout, but check every button uh, with my chart to make sure that you have and if you haven't, if it's the odd note that's wrong, you may be able to live with it. Uh, but if there's a few wrong, you might need to take it to a fettler to have it done because it's not something you can do yourself unless you know what you're doing. And if you get in a mess with it, you can completely ruin your instrument. So I would strongly suggest uh, that you do that. Take it to someone who knows what they're doing with these instruments. So funny old video today. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, thanks for watching and you'll see me in my next one.